but we begin with a standout night for so-called Liberty Republicans in Kentucky on primary night. One well-known face on this movement is Representative Savannah Maddox, who first took office in 2019. She doesn't call herself a Liberty Republican, but it's the emerging nickname for more lawmakers like her who say they're a bit more authentic to conservative principles, especially when it comes to spending and constitutional rights. I spoke to her earlier this week to get a better understanding of the political perspective. Instead of just lowering one tax and moving it around to another part of the tax codes, we need to actually cut spending and lower taxes. Also with regard to protecting and defending our Second Amendment rights. In reality, some of these folks support red flag laws and they support what they refer to as common sense gun control when in reality gun control is unconstitutional. Maddox says Kentucky voters sent a resounding message to Frankfurt during this year's primary after unseating two House incumbents and fending off some well-funded primary challenges. Uh, Senator Bledsoe, I'll go ahead and let you start the discussion here. Do you agree that a message was sent? I agree it was a big night for Republicans. And you know, as the tent gets bigger, because more and more people join the Republican Party, you're going to see naturally more differences to certain degrees on certain issues. Not on foundations or principles, but on various degrees, and those shows up in primaries. Especially they show up in some of the geographical places in our state. And we had a number of incumbents do very, very well. So I think it was a good night for all Republicans, not just them. Were there any surprises either, you think? Well, I would say that... Um for me, the surprise was mixed with disappointment, uh, especially as I think about my colleague, uh, Representative Killian Timoney. I absolutely have adored working with him in the General Assembly, and I was really disappointed uh, with the margins on his race. I knew that he had a major challenge, and they were sending out a lot of mailers against him, and um, some of it was really distasteful, and I thought disrespectful to the work he'd done. And I was really surprised that the Fayette County voters and Jessamine County vo voters bought into that. Uh, I thought some of the misinformation and things that were said about him, that the voters would know better. Uh, but what turned out at the polls um, did surprise me. With the trend that we're, we're seeing here, would you expect future primaries to get uglier based on, on what you saw? Well, if we continue to see the effect of dark money in politics and we see these um, PACs and super PACs funneling money into Kentucky to unseat uh, moderate Republicans, then unfortunately I do think that's what we're going to see is the cannibalization uh, of teammates. Well, to throw it back at you, are Democrats also seeing similar challenges on, on their side from more uh, extreme wings of the party? Well, at, definitely at the national level, we're seeing that. Within Kentucky, I think the, the variation is there, but maybe not as significant as it used to be. I don't know, Daniel Grossberg in, in Louisville had a pretty tight primary and almost got unseated. And I wonder if the Israeli situation that he's been so pro on that stance may have had a, an impact in his race, because that was a pretty tight primary for him as an incumbent. Yeah, it really was. Um, fortunately, he was able to pull that off because I think it's uh, important for our caucus right now to keep our members and grow. Um, I don't know if that was the, the deciding issue in his race or uh, if there may have been other things going on in Louisville that were really specific to his community. As incumbents yourselves, is there anything that you all took away from Tuesday that may make you think uh, uh, differently about how you approach future primaries? I think it's important to be authentic mm -hmm. and not take a vote because you think it's the right the right to get reelected. And I, I mean, Killian Timoney voted the way he felt. He was authentic in his votes, and that was not representational of the primary voters in his district. But I think he was he led with integrity and authenticity in his votes. And I hope people do that and they're honest about that and not try to game the system or try to outwing or out out I don't know get somewhere else out there. You talk about different perspectives within the party, but it's still being a good night for Republicans moving forward as, as there's a, a bigger array of Republicans in the General Assembly. How do you all work together and compromise on things that you all may see differently on? Well, we have great debates. I mean, I, unfortunately, you don't get the, the opportunity to see the, the caucus debates, you know, from both of our chambers where we do have pretty hotly contested issues and we debate the full umbrella of them and that's that's an important thing for us to do as policymakers. We represent different districts um, from the ur urban to the rural and sometimes just the east to west part of our state not to mention Louisville and Lexington. So we we debate them well and at the end of the day we kind of come to consensus and come out united of what we're going to do to move the state forward and I think we've done a pretty good job doing that. 
Does something similar take place on the Democrat side too? Yes, absolutely. There are a few topics where we don't have great alignment and it's in those internal dialogues uh, between House members and Senate members that we find the best path forward that allows us to serve the needs of Kentuckians and really put Kentucky people and Kentucky families first. Wrapping up with you all, what does the future of this movement look like if you'd even call it a movement? The part that I think we both agree with the ugly side of politics. I mean, I received every one of those mailers and text messages and you know, he's a dad and a, and a father. We all are, we're moms and um, those who are elected have families and the IE uh, PACs and those others who are putting stuff out that just said, man, let's disagree on policy all day. But going after the person discourages people and good people from getting an office. And I hope we stick to the policy. All right. Agreed. Thank you both. All eyes now on the November election. And in Kentucky, the battle over the constitutional amendment on school choice, it's only just getting started.